Now those of you who've been following my videos know that in a few days I'm going to be going away on a three to four day trip up into the hills, into the middle of nowhere for a survival expedition. That's not to say I'm travelling without any gear. I will be taking some gear, a lot of it I will be using and reviewing because I've replaced practically all of my outdoor gear in the last month or so, which has cost me a fortune. But it's pretty good gear. In a moment I'll show you what I'm taking um, and I'll explain a little bit about why I'm taking a particular thing. Uh, but I won't pull out the survival kit because the survival kit's got dozens and dozens of individual items in. I'll make a separate video about that because that's really just like a little grab and go bag. The rest of the stuff will be associated with this three to four day trip. And I'm saying three to four days because it'll depend on the weather. I do have four days. If it's nice, I might even spend five days, providing I can find plenty to eat because I will be taking no food and no shelter. That's pretty important. I want this to be a proper survival trip, not, a, not just a bushcraft trip where it's a lot easier. I want it to be a survival trip. No food or water whatsoever. Everything is going to have to be found, hunted or trapped. Now I've got a strange sort of dichotomy happening with the stuff that I'm taking because I do want to take a lot of gear to use and review for you guys, but I also want to travel light. So I am going to have to trim out quite a lot of the stuff that I want to take, I think because I've only got two small backpacks. They are Maxpedition Condor 2. Really, it's not a three to four day pack. We all know that. The second one is a One Tigris Assault Pack. This one's bigger, this one's 34 liters. I think the Maxpedition's 25 or 26 liters. So it does hold a lot more. It's also a hell of a lot cheaper. So, I'm going to show you the gear that I want to take, then I'm going to see how much will fit in each one of these backpacks. Now, I do have quite a lot of attachments that can go on either of these bags, because they've both got good molly attachments, but I don't want them just to be a tiny bag with huge bags bolted on all over the place, because that is ridiculous. First of all, I'm obviously taking this camera that I'm filming with now, and the tripod because I want nice steady shots. Last thing I want is to go and film Blair Witch Part 3 in the woods. Right, we'll start with the clothes and camping sort of stuff. That's a nice rolly mat because I want to be comfortable. That's a very, very lightweight jungle sleeping bag with a midgy net because I don't want to be eaten alive and I do want some warmth. That's a Gore-Tex jacket. It packs down very, very small. Selection of clothes there, including a waterproof pair of socks, lightweight t-shirts, uh, thermals, pants and so on. Just the general sort of thing you would take for two or three days. All lightweight stuff. This is kind of water and hygiene kit. Got a lightweight towel, midi repellent, toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, water purifying straw and a water container. Nice pair of boots that I've been breaking in over the last few days. They are Harkala Pro Hunter GTX with Kevlar fronts on, so they don't get worn by brambles and heather. This is a little bit of my filming kit. There's a chest mount there for the GoPro. And that's the GoPro in there, in that bag. Uh, there's other mounts in there. Um, charging gear, spare batteries, all the sort of thing you would take for an expedition. That is a solar charger. That's it opened up. You've got a couple of solar cells there, solar panels, and you've got a high capacity battery. One links to the other with a little cable, and it is pretty good so far. I've used it a couple of times and been very pleased. In here I've just got a little bag with the essential connections that I'll be taking for the GoPro and also for my phone. And this particular model is the 5 volt or 12 volt one because I've got some things that require 12 volts like the charger for the GoPro. 
this is just quite a comprehensive survival kit inside of there. I'll do a separate video on that, but it's just the general sort of thing that you would see in most folks' videos. That is a, a very swanky spade, and you'll see that in another video as well. I've got that to test. I haven't used that yet, but um, it's quite an interesting tool. Here we've got a phone with headphones. I like to listen to some tunes when I'm out, and obviously a phone is quite essential if you get stuck or in any trouble. Non-stick pan there. Extra fire starter. This is a little honey stove. It's like a hexagon stove that you put together, flat packed. A little bit extra fire lighting stuff in there. Again, I'll do a video on that in the future. Two sources of light. So here we've got through night headlamp which is very very good extremely bright I think it's 750 lumens which is any amount bright enough it's also got an SOS function on there as well and this one is the through night TN12 and on that I've got a red filter because I do intend doing some nighttime hunting possibly in woods and the filter is very useful for that I think that's 1050 lumens on its brightest setting any amount bright enough this is a Baco Laplander saw, it's like a folding saw, very good for cutting through big branches. Fiskars FX5, I've only used that very, very occasionally so far in my own wood, just to hack down a few little trees, and it's extremely sharp. God, it's razor sharp. Ooh, a choice of three knives there. Two basic bushcraft knives, roughly a three and a half to four inch blade. I've got a Gerber and a book there. I've got a book skinning kit. I'll only take one of those knives. I'll decide which when I see how it will attach to the various rucksacks. Here we've got a basic fishing kit. We've got a little disgorger there, scissors sort of thing. I don't want any fish to get things in the guts, so if they do, I can take that out. I will be eating some of the fish, but not all of them. This is a rod case aluminium tube with the six piece seven foot long fly rod inside of it this is the reel this is exactly the gear that I use when I'm on the river so if you've seen my fishing videos you know what the rod and reel are like got some four pound line there and here we've got a mix of flies as you know I like to use dry flies predominantly so in here we've got a really good selection of flies they'll represent dry flies at all times of the year but I've also put some nymphs in there as well easily enough flies there and this don't worry it's not a real gun it's an air pistol it's an HW45 with a full tin of pellets this is in 177 caliber and that just about completes it do you think that's all gonna fit in one of those rucksacks Actually, there's one thing that I forgot to mention when I was showing you all the gear that I'm taking and how much stuff would fit in these packs. And that is some sort of hat, because I'm expecting there to be a nation of midges up there, because there always is at this time of year. There's also those little fake blue bottle sorts of flies as well, absolutely disgusting little things that go all over you. I hate them things. A hat will keep them out of my lovely flowing locks. And midgey repellent will keep them away as well hopefully but also the other thing that I forgot to mention was toilet paper I'll be taking some of that <laughs> because your backside can only take so many leaves being rubbed on it before it starts to get itchy <laughs> okay on to the backpacks this is a Maxpedition Condor 2 with a few extra additions we've got a fatty pouch there that's already strapped on and we've got a little flashlight holder there. I actually bought that one in the wrong colour, but does it matter? Nope. One main compartment with a few different sleeves in there. Two compartments on the outside and numerous fixing points. It's a very well made backpack. But can we get all of that stuff in here? Hmm. Let's find out. Right, there is a few things that can be taken out of here straight away. The boots, I'll be wearing those, so they don't need to go in. Uh, chest mount for the camera, I could wear that. That can be taken out. 
At the moment, the air pistol can be taken out because I've got a holster on the way that's going to fit somewhere, either on my side or on the backpack somewhere, possibly. So I'll take that out. The phone, that can just go in any trouser pocket. Little neck knife will be round my neck, not in the backpack. Okay, so all of this stuff needs to go into this backpack or strap onto it somehow. that all of that stuff was ever going to even half fit into and onto here. But there you go. It did. Admittedly, there's not much room for anything else, but all that gear, all the stuff that I wanted to take, is in here. It's just a very, very good fit. Lovely and comfortable. Not rocking round anywhere. Extremely stable. Well balanced, don't feel like it's pulling on me. I would be very, very happy to take that indeed. It's a really versatile, well balanced, well fitting, comfortable pack and accessories. But I need to test the One Tigris pack now. I'm expecting to get more in that. And the second backpack is from One Tigris. This is very, very similar. It's got a lot of similar features to the Maxpedition, but it is a little bit bigger. In fact, it's quite a lot bigger. The main compartment is 32 litres, whereas the Maxpedition one's only about 25. Same sort of thing, it's got attachment points all over the place. It hasn't got any big external pockets though. Will this one fit all the gear in? Let's find out. All right. One Tigris, assault pack, all this stuff, here we go. We're going to leave the same stuff out as we did last time, and we're just going to go with exactly the same amount of stuff as I put in and on the Maxpedition pack. internal pack size is much bigger than the Maxpedition but when it's packed out it means that this pocket here is very very small it's, it's got nowhere to go so I can't get much in there this foldy down flap means that attaching that fella isn't so easy unless it's attached up there then it's going to unbalance the pack the rolly mat would easily go on the bottom. So, uh, yeah, I thought 
the gear that I got inside that other one would maybe half fill this one, possibly give me room for more clothes and a lot more gear inside and then I would probably get just as much stuff on the outside, but I can't really. Could be I just haven't got the right attachments for this, but I think for the purpose of this trip, I'm leaning towards the Maxpedition one because I've got everything there and it's a very modular system. This is a great bag though, don't get me wrong, this is a great bag, but for the specific gear that I'm taking on this trip, fitting it on isn't so good. So, the Maxpedition is the one I'll be taking on the trip. That's not to say the one Tigris is no good, it's an excellent backpack. But for the stuff that I'm taking, it just wouldn't fit it in conveniently. Remember that solar charger that I showed you? It fits in the top pocket perfectly in the Maxpedition. That multi-tool shovel thing that I'm going to be trying out when I'm up there, it fits perfectly in the other external pocket. It's very difficult to get that in or on the One Tigris pack. Which really surprised me. I was fully expecting to take this pack. I may take it on another little expedition, but for this particular trip, Maxpedition is the one. This is a fraction of the price. It holds more in the main body of the thing, but I think what lets it down, just as an initial observation, is the fact that the pockets aren't properly external. They don't stick out like they do on the Maxpedition. See this pocket here? It sticks out by a good two to three inches. Obviously it's more difficult to make that sort of a pack, especially with this sort of material to this standard. Therefore the Maxpedition one is a hell of a lot more money. If you can live without that sort of convenience, go for the one Tigris, fraction of the price. Money's no object and you want something that's absolutely perfectly designed for the job, Maxpedition. That's my initial observations. As I say, I will try the one Tigris pack in future trips. But this is the one I'm taking on this one. It is heavy, but it is comfortable. And none of this stuff is rattling around. I've seen a lot of these Maxpedition packs that people put together and when they fit these external add-ons on, they're not secure. They've got maybe one tie at the top and they're swinging around all over the place. Just imagine you're going through somewhere that's pretty restricted. You want all of this stuff to be absolutely fixed on as well as it possibly can be. I think that's what I've done with this. So I'm very much looking forward to using this pack. If you've enjoyed this video, please click like. Just lets me know that I'm on the right track and you can share it anywhere you wish. I am only here on YouTube. I'm not on Facebook or Twitter or that other one with the photos, Instagram, not on any forums. I don't get time for any of that sort of stuff. If you're not subscribed, it's awesome when you click the subscribe button. It makes me look good because it, it always looks better having 50,000 subscribers to having four lets me know I'm on the right track, just like clicking the like button. And I'm really looking forward to this trip and bringing you with me. There's going to be a lot of interesting stuff. Quite a lot of it you won't have seen before. And I'm not going to give anything away. It's going to be a good trip. Now, although I could take one of my rifles with me, that would make it extremely easy. And I don't want this to be easy. That's why I've gone with that. It's quite possibly one of the most powerful air pistols you can get in the UK. It's just below six feet pounds. And although there's a lot of debate as to whether this should be used for hunting anything, at very close range for rabbits and pigeons, it will kill them. Now I wouldn't consider shooting at anything that I intended to kill to eat at over 10 yards with that. Not because it wouldn't kill it, it might, but because 
the lack of accuracy from a spring powered air pistol handheld diminishes greatly after about five or six yards so even at 10 yards I would have to be pretty certain that I was going to put down whatever I was aiming at this is a real close quarters hunting tool so don't think I'll be shooting things 50 60 yards with this because that's just ridiculous absolutely ridiculous very close quarters creeping around extremely slowly with care quietly surprising rabbits that are sitting thinking that I'll just walk straight past and surprising pigeons that have come into roost that think I'm just going to walk straight past as well during the day when I'm out up there I'll take note of where pigeons roost and I'll go back there on a night pigeon tastes lovely of course I am going to have the fishing rod as well so hopefully I'll be able to catch some fish my main diet I think will consist of fish and rabbits and possibly pigeons and one thing I'm not going to shoot is the pheasants or grouse although pheasants are extremely easy to catch because they're so thick it's a work and shoot and the last thing they want is some clown going up there and shooting the game pigeons rabbits they're fair game the class is vermin folks come up shoot them anyway they might as well be shot and eaten those of you unfamiliar with this particular air pistol it's a Vyrock which is German HW45 over lever pellet goes in there this is a 177 caliber click shut got a safety just above the handle open sights and it's a just a damn well made good air pistol it's got a lot of power accurate very well made and it's going to last you for years I'd rather find a backpack that had the majority Feel free to do so, it's much appreciated. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. If you think anybody may make use of it, share it anywhere you want. I'm only here on Facebook. The last thing you want to suffer from is Paritis a &I, when you're out miles from nowhere. And if you don't know what Paritis a &I is, look it up on Google. It's itchy bum. If you've stuck around this long, you're obviously quite keen for knowledge and quite keen to see the outtakes as well, which have become a bit of a trademark of a lot of my videos. So I'll give you one little secret, and that is that I will be producing a series of videos, not only about the trip that I'm going on, but also about different British plants, their uses, and also lore about them as well. Beliefs that people used to have about them way back in the day, healing properties, magical properties, that sort of thing. That stuff is of interest to me because there's so much out there that is not only useful to eat, but it's also useful from a medicinal point of view as well. And a lot of that knowledge was wiped out in the 1500s and 1600s during the witch trials when anybody who knew anything about plants was burnt at the stake so I'm hoping to give a little bit of that knowledge back just in little short videos about different plants their uses and a little bit of a backstory about what people believed about them so look out for those I'm looking forward to doing that just little short videos thanks for watching